On today's show, we'll be talking about what is typically the biggest turnoff to shoppers when it comes to most funeral home websites, and that is ineffective website content. The majority of funeral home websites are very similar, especially when it comes to their content. What specific things can you do to make your website stand out to shoppers? We'll talk about that and more on today's episode. Welcome to Strategy Talks by Funeral Results Marketing, where funeral professionals discover the latest marketing strategies that get results. Now join Robin Heppel and Brian Young as they share their insights and experiences to help you and your firm during these ever-changing times in the funeral profession. Welcome to another episode of Strategy Talks by Funeral Results Marketing. Now, before we dive into today's topic, I want to let you know to stick around to the end of the show and we'll tell you how to get a free six-point website content review. In our last episode, we talked about 10 tips to help you save money with your Google AdWords campaigns so that you can get more shoppers to your website. But as you know, that's only half the battle. After you get shoppers to your website, you've got to stand out and interest them. Today, Brian is going to be talking about what typically is the biggest turnoff to shoppers when it comes to funeral home websites. And with an increasing amount of competition from non-traditional businesses, including hotels, churches, and others, it's more important than ever to really impress with your website. So Brian, most funeral home websites seem to say the same thing. Many of them look pretty similar too. What kinds of things can our listeners do to improve their website content so that they can drive more shopper calls? That's a really good question, Rob. I think one of the first things we have to do is remember what's the fundamental goal of a business's website, right? And, you know, if you take it all the way down to the core, the fundamental goal is to boost the bottom line. That might be directly uh, by winning shopper calls from interested or impressed shoppers. It can also be indirectly by generating interest, establishing, you know, or increasing credibility, providing great customer service. You can also measure your marketing effectiveness, as you've talked about before. Uh, they're maintaining top of mind brand awareness from uh, people who are viewing obits on your website. There's a lot of different ways that website can boost the bottom line. But you know, as far as this core question of what can we do with content uh, to to boost the benefit of the website, I think it's also important to remember that funeral home websites debuted back in about 1996-97, and far more people were still having pretty traditional funerals back then than there are today. As you know, today we've got the celebration of, um, of life movement just exploding. Uh, a lot of people are doing non-traditional things. Back then, the goal of the website was to have an online phone book page, and that's really it. People said, yeah, I just need a way for shoppers to find me and call me, the owners of funeral homes. But now that we've got so many consumers going in the direction of celebration of life services, using all kinds of venues to do that, well, staying relevant and attractive is a far more competitive problem for funeral homes. And before we can solve any problem, we first got to understand the problem because when the problem's clearly understood, then the answer quickly emerges. So, you know, what is the problem? You already said it twice. There's ineffective content. That's what really bothers shoppers because a website is a communication vehicle. People are going there to hear what you have to say, what you have to offer them. And before I even delve into content, which is the core point of this, of this podcast, I wanted to point out the fact that some websites, you get tripped up before you even get to digging into the content, and that's because of the website navigation. Sometimes websites have so many pages, and they're jumbled up in the navigation that consumers have a hard time finding that. But that's an even bigger problem here in the death care industry because, as Dr. Alan Wolfeld has pointed out, and that need person has at least a 40% reduced capacity to absorb information. So having a navigation structure for your website that's extremely simple, that's just a must. You know, if you don't have that, it's crazy. And, and there's uh, too many websites that I've seen in the industry where the navigation makes it hard for the shoppers to get to the information they think they want to find. Either there's too many choices. You know, I've, seen, I've seen websites where a huge box drops down as soon as you, you uh, hover your mouse over one nav title. A huge box drops down with about 30 choices in it, maybe 20, 30, 40 choices. Uh, that's tough for somebody whose brain is working just fine, let alone having their uh, ability to process information reduced by 40% due to the shock and trauma of an at-need situation. 
Another problem is sometimes there's too many clicks just to get to that information, whether it's on the home page or maybe I'm trying to find out about prices or packages. So first I'm on the home page, then I end up on a section page, and then from there I get to a topic page, and then I finally get to the information. Well, that was already too long of a process, but on top of that, in a lot of cases, online shoppers will come back to your website later or show it to a family member. Maybe somebody in the family is kind of doing the preliminary shopping and they're going to get back in touch with their brother or sister or the siblings, the decision makers, and show them what they found, what they narrowed it down to. Now it's hard to find information. So without any more on that, navigation has to be simple or we can't even get into the topic of the website content. So with that kind of precursor laid out there, let's talk about the content. As we said, you know, the biggest problem is ineffective content. Well, funeral home website content is often ineffective or under-effective because of what? What makes it that way? Probably the biggest single problem is the people who crafted the website didn't really stop and define the target audiences of their website. Who are the target audiences of a funeral home website? versus a cremation business website, versus a cemetery business website. Who are each of those audiences and what do they want? You know, if you're not effectively answering the questions of each group, uh, we're not going to resonate. And of course, the most important core question is, what can you do for me right now? That's what people want to know, especially Americans. What can you do for me right now? It's all about me right now. I'm shopping you and I want to find what I want to find fast. Uh, too often, there's still this, this lingering desire out there because, you know, funeral directors are all about taking care of people, and they've been taking care of people face-to-face -face or over the phone for decades. And so their desire is for the shopper, the family to, well, just, just call us, and we'll tell you everything you need to know. Unfortunately, that's old school. And while the reality is you could do a better job over the phone in many cases, and probably almost all cases with funeral home shoppers, not necessarily cremation shoppers, but certainly funeral home shoppers. And I meant to say not low-cost cremation shoppers, but certainly funeral home shoppers. Uh, the reality is they don't want it that way in too, many, in too many cases. And the number of shoppers who don't want it that way is growing quarter by quarter. And we know that because the volume of traffic on the funeral home website pages is growing quarter by quarter. And uh, so anyway, the, the desire to learn about the the options to learn about what solutions a funeral home can provide. The shoppers want to know that before they pick up the phone and call somebody. If the funeral home is talking about those things, and I'll get into some specifics here in a minute, well, that's a big advantage because with so funeral homes doing it, I have a lot of success stories I can share, and I know you do too, Rob, of, of funeral homes who put a large number of specifics out there, whether it's prices or not. I'm not just talking about prices. I'm talking about a large number of specifics, which I'll get into in a minute. And it makes that funeral home stand out. Also, not showing or not talking about the types of things shoppers are most interested in, that's what frustrates them. You know, they came there to find out, what can you do for me? And if it boils down to, uh, well, you know, call us, we'll help you. Hey, here's our staff information. Here's pictures of our facilities. Here's some veterans information. Here's Social Security. Here's pictures of our urns and our caskets. But as far as the services section, what can you do for me? If that content is really shallow or not in existence, um, also details about cremation uh, that your funeral home handles, that's a, that's a big missed opportunity. And there's a lot more details that we don't have time for today. And I'll just say for those of you who have been following us and know about our upcoming cremation conference that you can learn about at cremationconference.com, we're going to be getting into some more specific detail. But uh, that just kind of gives you an overview of what's causing the problem. Okay, so it you know it makes sense then that the website's content has to match the desires of the people coming to it, or they're not gonna they're gonna leave uh, unimpressed. Uh, you know, maybe a lot of us have never really thought uh, about defining who these audiences are uh, for our website. You know, what are their personas or what are their you know avatars? We've made, you know heard those terms in marketing. So so what are these target audiences, and how do we make our content effective? At connecting with them so we can get that shopper call yeah that's really that's really the core of the question so first of all we have to define the primary target audiences now for the funeral home that's pretty simple there's four uh, there's the at need crowd there's the pre need crowd there are those who want to read an obituary and maybe send a guest book you know maybe they'll send 
uh, flowers, but basically it's lumped up in the obit seekers. And then there are those folks who want to find directions and service information um, and or your contact information. So th that's really the four primary audiences. And the reason we know that is because of the volume of visitors on certain times of pages. Uh, other, other topics that are out there, maybe you have grief support information on your website. Maybe you have community activities. There's a number of different good things that can be persuasive and help you win calls but that's not where we see the lion's share of time spent on the website. So this is how we know about what the four primary target audiences are for a funeral home website. Something that we don't know from funeral um, home websites, but we know from other research that I want to point out here because it's really important to this conversation, is that 72% of death care shoppers are women. And this should greatly influence how content is presented on funeral home websites. The challenge has been that the funeral home industry is predominantly a male-dominated industry, at least in terms of ownership. I've seen the numbers in the mortuary schools, and there's increasing numbers of young ladies coming into the mortuary schools, well, ladies of all ages. So that that uh, ratio is shifting. But among owners, it's still primarily, I mean, it's predominantly a male-dominated industry. So, fellas, we've got to look at this and say, well, I like the website. My buddies like the website. But does our target audience like the website? and is the kind of content we're offering and the way we're presenting that content, is that really resonating with the shoppers? Because if I can get you know two or three more calls a year out of my website from people I impress, let alone one or two more a month, uh, we're talking about sometimes you know five figures worth of revenue increase for just tweaking your content. So primary audiences are at need, pre-need, obit seekers, and people who want directions or service info or a phone number. And among that audience of shoppers, 72% are female. So now that we know that, let's talk about how to craft effective content a little bit. And granted, this is a big topic. It's hard to kind of pack into uh, a podcast. But obit seekers, that's pretty easy. They want to read the obit. And probably they want to find uh, what other people have said, if they can read the guest book. They might want to see uh, the service information. Where is the service? When is the service? Another thing that's common is people who, one of the four groups I mentioned is people who want to contact you. They want to find a phone number. And I just put out here that it's, it's still, in many cases, very wise to put a phone number in an easy-to-see place somewhere um, at the top of your website. And we wouldn't normally advocate for that in other industries necessarily. But in this industry, again, where at-need shoppers have a reduced capacity to absorb information, which really means it could be right in front of them and they really might not be seeing it or picking up on it. So uh, making that phone number easy to find is helpful. And also on your Contact Us page, there's been a trend in the last couple of years where for whatever reason, web developers are starting to put a paragraph of text on the Contact Us page and the phone number is buried at the end of the paragraph. Well, there are a lot of people who expect to find what used to be at least the old standard and I think still is really the standard universally if I go to the Contact Us page, I'm going to find your business name and address and phone number typically if you're a brick-and-mortar business. And when it's not there, it'll be frustrating uh, for people who, especially folks who haven't kept up with the most, the newest trends. Not that we haven't had phone numbers in the footer for a while, several years now regularly, but still, there's a lot of older visitors who aren't super web savvy, uh, and I've seen that they regularly go to the Contact Us page. Okay, now that we've talked about that, let's get into really where the where our bread and butter is, which is appealing to at-need and pre-need shoppers. And how do we craft more effective content to engage with these folks and interest them in what we have to offer as a business? And I just want to throw out here uh, two concepts. Predominantly, almost across the board, content on funeral home websites is informational. But it's not very persuasive. And I'm not talking salesy. I'm not talking about like when you write an advertisement and at the end we have that call to action. Call now today and we'll take care of you. That's not at all we're talking about. You know, that can really kill your business, as I'm sure you already know. You're probably flinching as you hear me say it. But um, we're talking about information that by its very nature is persuasive. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So if we specifically answer the question of what can you do for me, we're going to connect with people. And the ideal way to answer the question of what you can do for me is a mixture of showing and telling, not just telling. How many of you have been on a website and there'll be three, five, six paragraphs of information 
going down that page. It's just a long book. And while it's true that in the arrangement room, a family sitting across the table from you will be looking you right in the eyes and be very engaged as you convey all that information, it's also true, as the web uh, statistics and studies show, that those same people don't want to read all that on the website. They're not reading lots and lots. They want to see it. And uh, you, you, if you haven't heard it before, I, I've heard Rob mention it. You'll be here as mentioned it again that, that families aren't like to watch video. Uh, video is becoming, you know, for a while has been the hottest medium there is. So if we can show and tell and not just tell, that is powerful. Now, as far as what specific topics can we be showing and telling about that will engage the consumer, I'd like to give an example. Um, from uh, my wife and I's honeymoon, we went to Kauai. Love that island. Been back a few times over in Hawaii, call it the uh, Garden Island. But on, on the beach area where we were down on the south side, there's several resorts there just stacked up in, an, uh, in a row, as, as you're used to seeing on the beach. You know, there's the Sheraton property, there's a Marriott property, and there is a, um, a Hyatt property. Granted, it's a Grand Hyatt. But for the sake of this example, there's three high-quality hotels stacked up. All of them have great beaches sitting right against the ocean. Well, which one am I going to pick? They're all good quality. Um, I know I'm going to have a great time at, at the, in Hawaii on the beach. So it could be very easy in that, in that situation to boil it down and say, well, I'll just see which one's the cheapest because they're all about the same. Isn't that the exact challenge that so many of the funeral homes are having today? That if you've got a couple competitors in town or more, uh, maybe you're in a state where you're just packed with competitors like Pennsylvania or Ohio, but uh, the competitors are everywhere. And when everybody looks about the same, isn't that terribly hard to, to uh, compete on anything besides price? Well, if you go to the websites of, of these hotels, uh, what you typically find for the big resort hotels is they're not just going to tell you what their prices are and what the room sizes are. They'll show you a lot of pictures. They'll talk about how many swimming pools they have. They'll talk about um, how long their beach is. But more than just informational facts, they'll also start putting together some interesting things for you. You've probably noticed in the recent years that vacation packages are starting to include different themes. For instance, they'll have, uh, they'll have a gourmet cooking package. So you go to the resort, and then every day for two hours, you attend gourmet cooking class, and there's a chef there, and you learn how to do beautiful foods. And if you're a foodie, this is fantastic. Now you're getting to do your favorite activity, in a beautiful place in the world. So they've got cooking packages. They've got yoga packages. They've got water aerobics packages. They've got spa packages. I'm sure all you fellows have known for a long time. They have golf packages. But the point is they're presenting their business and the physical facts of what they can provide you along with ideas of how you can enjoy their location. And they try to come up with unique packages and special different ways to enjoy that space. Now, how many of you are just starting to dabble in that as you're trying to create packages and appeal to the families that are out there looking for a celebration of life? And probably a few of you are, if, if uh, depending on how many of you listening to this podcast are on the average, uh, you're not, but there's, there's uh, some people who are. And I'd like to give you another example that I think really demonstrates this on a funeral home level. So one of our clients, uh, a man I've had a chance to work with for a long time in Northern Virginia, Michael Turch, he has uh, several funeral homes down there called uh, Cunningham Turch. And on his website, we, we put up pictures of something I, I rarely see in the industry. These are giant poster boards. Actually, that's, that's a bad description. If you go to the trade show, in the trade show booths of your state or the national conventions, you'll see that in each of the booths where the vendors are, they'll have these, uh, these backdrops behind them. Sometimes they're posters that roll up, kind of like a miniature movie screen. It's tall, but it's narrow. Other times they're an eight-foot curved wall or flat wall with these uh, bottom-to-top graphics. Well, Cunningham Church will uh, create beautiful graphics and put it on these backdrops. And I've, I know of almost no funeral home that does that. And I said, wow, that's really, that's really amazing. I haven't seen anything like that. We need to get that as a picture on your website. So he set up a day for a photographer to come in. They turned on all the lights, got the lighting right, created a beautiful scene at the front of the funeral home. We took pictures, and the pictures have worked great. But before we could even get the pictures on the website, they had a family come in, 
during the time uh, just before the photo shoot was supposed to, supposed to happen. And that family had called in about half an hour, an hour before, said, hey, we saw your price for your, uh, your low-cost cremation package, your cheapest offering there, and that's what we're coming in to get. That's all we want. And so anyway, they were coming in, and when the family arrived, it was still, I guess, 15 minutes or half an hour before the photo shoot, you have to walk past the chapel entrance on the way to the arrangement office. And as the uh, husband and wife walked by, they, they looked in there and they saw those huge, those huge poster displays and they said, well, what's that? And these were a backdrop uh, to the side of the casket and some flowers there. And they stopped and just turned and walked right in the chapel. They were seeing something they'd never seen before. And uh, this is a perfect example of why it was so important to get this content on the website. Short of it is they walked out having uh, paid for a funeral, you know, $4,300 funeral, I think it was, including graphics like this, because they had seen something they hadn't seen before. It wasn't just a funeral, and that was different. It was new. How much of it was different and new? Really, just the graphics. They had a chapel like other funeral homes have. They had nice staff like other funeral homes. They had pretty flowers like any funeral home could get up front or the family would order them. But this was new and different. It changed the whole context of what they thought of as a funeral. And now you can see those, those images and how hard that, that, uh, that firm has worked to get their content up on the web so that when you arrive at that funeral home website, you're seeing things you haven't seen before. Now, getting back to the original problem that, that Rob identified at the beginning, which was uh, users finding content they don't like, ineffective content, unuseful content, if we're having content on the website that shows pictures of what we can do, and if we're describing our services not just as a general price list reprint of like, well, our, our package with the service costs X and it includes these bullets, and our package with a viewing in the service costs Y and includes these bullets, and if you just want to have a cremation with a private family viewing that costs Z and here are these bullets, that's just purely informational. There's nothing in there to engage my imagination. There's nothing in there that makes you say, wow, that's a neat idea. And you might be saying, well, I don't have big, tall backdrops like that firm you were just talking about. But you know what? There's special things that you do or have done that if you start articulating those and putting the facts within the context of these vivid, colorful ideas, they get people's attention. And more importantly, remember, the target audience is 72% women, female. And women notice details, right, fellas? And they notice when we forget the details quite often if your wife is like mine. So when we start queuing in on the details, when we start offering neat ideas of what they could do in your funeral home, when we start showing instead of just telling, that approach to creating website content changes the way in which your funeral home is viewed. And now you stand out. You're different than the three or four guys down the street who all have industry websites with canned standard industry content because they didn't want to take the time to write their own, so they just accepted the generic content, and now you're different. And is that, <clears throat> excuse me, does that give you a chance to compete more effectively online and win more interest from shoppers? I think it does. And more importantly, the time spent on the page and the kinds of phone calls you get also demonstrate that it does. Hey, Brian, well, that's great. Um, and <clears throat> obviously, this is a huge topic that uh, you could spend you know, hours and hours going into great detail. Um, and I think we'll do that in a in a future podcast. Uh, we'll get maybe drill into some specific pages and, um, you know, kind of see what types of content changes and improvements can be made, uh, you know, to kind of really empower the listener to, to go ahead and do that. Um, especially compared to what we typically find on most funeral home websites. So, you know, he, here we are. And, um, you know, if you're thinking you need a little bit of help with your website, or if you just think it could be uh, stronger, uh, make sure that you request your free six point website content review. Uh, there'll be a button, uh, on the, uh, on the show, show notes page, uh, that you can, uh, just register for that and, uh, and see if there's things that, uh, the you know, things what, that you can do to boost your website's ability to win more shopper calls. And Brian, maybe just, um, you know, I know that uh, you know, with a, you have a bit of a process, so maybe just kind of give them an overview of the things that you're looking for, just maybe a sneak peek of, of what what's included in that review. Yeah, sure, Rob. So um, 
the bigger topics they're, they're broken down in nitty gritty these, these each encompass a fair bit but the first one's very straightforward it's effective navigation so we evaluate uh, how easy or challenging it is to get to uh, key content for shoppers the second area is we look and see how well defined the content is for each of the target audiences. And the third area is we look at how emotionally engaging the information about the firm is. And that's really a key one to making the phone ring more rather than less. Uh, we also look at uh, is there the right kind of information about services available on the website. And I know that right kind is a bit subjective and a large topic, but we get into that and uh, evaluate that. We also evaluate uh, how meaningful the pictures and video are. You know, does that engage? Does it really connect? Does it show something special, or does it just look like a stock photo or video? Is it is it uh, hitting on some heartstrings, hopefully in the right kind of way, or in kicking on the imagination? Because somebody whose imagination comes on when they're looking at your website can easily think, "I want to work with these guys. They're they know what they're doing, and they'll get a special a special kind of experience I want to have for my mom or my dad." And the last point is we look to see if we have the right kind of information there about products. Uh, presented in a way that's that's most effective. Well, that's great, and I think um, yeah, anyone that wants to improve, you know, we can we can drive traffic to websites and uh, you know pay to get people there or build uh, great rankings in our search engine search engine optimization. But if they, um, yeah, that's yeah, as you said earlier, that's just part of the battle. They need to then be engaged, and you have to impress them. So. Uh, and, and that kind of leads me, uh, if, if you're interested in this, make sure you sign up for your for the six point um, uh, content check. But uh, and also join us at um, uh, in St. Petersburg in September uh, for cremationconference.com, where Brian will be talking in more detail about uh, website content as it pertains to winning cremation shoppers. Also, over the last couple months, we've been, uh, both Brian and I have been pumping out a lot of content. Uh, and, you know, there's lots of things that you can do to uh, educate yourself on how to market your funeral home or cremation business. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're, we're up now in our 10th and 11th uh, podcast episodes. Uh, we have, there's a number of webinars that are available on demand, uh, available through the website at, um, at funeralresultsmarketing.com. Uh, for the for the conference, just simply go to cremationconference.com. Uh, the early bird session will be, um, discount will be ending at the end of July, so make sure that you um, register before before then and, and get your room booked. And uh, yeah, we we're not really stopping through the summer. We'll have um, our podcast coming out pretty well on a weekly basis, so stay tuned for the next one. Uh, and Brian, I'll uh, just turn it back over to you here to wrap things up. Sure, Rob. I guess I'll ask our favorite ending question. What's your burning question about online marketing for your funeral home? Uh, if you leave it here, we'll try to answer it on an upcoming episode, as we always do. And if you like what you're hearing, again, we ask you, please leave your comments on the blog or give it a rating on iTunes or Google Play because it's important to us and we hope that you find this important to you. And if you share those comments, we know it'll make its way out into the industry and become important to others if we're doing a good job. Well, and Brian, and, and uh, you know, on that point, we have received some questions, and we're just uh, uh, once we get a few more, we'll uh, we'll actually have um, I think uh, just a, a separate webinar where we uh, go through and answer a, a series of questions. So make sure you leave them here uh, to get your question answered, and um, and if it's a big topic, we'll we'll tackle it in a podcast episode, uh, and if it's a specific question. Uh, we'll add it to the uh, question, the, our marketing Q&A uh, webinar. And, um, but once again, we, we really thank you for your time uh, spending it with us today. Uh, as we say, it's our goal uh, for you to serve as many families as possible and provide them with more meaningful services. So make sure you check back soon for another episode of Strategy Talks by Funeral Results Marketing. Until the next episode, this has been Brian Young and Robin Heppel. This has been another episode of Strategy Talks with Robin Heppel and Brian Young. To ask a question or leave a comment, visit funeralresultsmarketing.com forward slash talks. To make sure that you never miss an episode, you can subscribe to this podcast for free on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher.